uh, I was dressing up and running around in capes and jumping off things and every costume change I could make, I would make and singing strange songs and opera to my Very bizarre behaviour for a child, but clearly I was meant to be an acting. And that's, thank God, I got to do in this film, so that was nice to play a superhero. I got to jump and swing things around, just the way I like to do it, when I was five. Yeah, I, I always wanted to be a singer, dancer, and actress, and um, so coming to Hollywood was a, a huge deal. It was wonderful. Dream come true. I wanted to be um, an actress, singer, dancer, and a cashier. <laughs> and, and I got a chance to do it all. There was something about being a cashier, pressing the buttons. I know it sounds weird, but I did. I, I wanted to be a cashier too. So yes, I've always wanted to do that. So I got a chance to. Same here. I mean, I wish I had something more fascinating. Cashier, yeah, absolutely. I, I wish I had something different to say, but from the moment I think I can, as long as I can remember, I always wanted to be a singer, dancer, actress, model, choreographer, producer. And that's what I would tell people at like the age of five. Um, so, luckily, I got to do all of that at some point in my career. I wanted to be a pediatrician, and it's because I really hated my pediatrician. <laughs> I was that annoying kid who would run away when it was time for shots. I once like left the building, and they were chasing me around the building. Um, I ended up becoming an accountant. Very exciting, I know. And now I'm an actress. So. <laughs> Ultimately, the greatest thing I ever wanted. 
for the movie. Like it was, I mean, I've seen Marilyn Monroe do that. Like, I mean, it's like that, you don't dream of that. You just dream of hopefully getting a job and hopefully paying your rent. Like that's kind of, you know, and then you want to kind of be recognized. And to get that is just beyond. And, and then even go beyond that, you look, you know, beyond the crowd and you see your whole family standing there. It's amazing. I would say Power Rangers has been an extreme blessing for me. But um, realistically, right now, I have not met my destiny. I still have goals to fulfill. I am very, very um, proud of where God has brought me so far. Power Rangers, meeting these you. I would have met Karen. <laughs> <laughs> the three Beyonce's. <laughs> we call each other Beyonce's. I don't know why we do that, but we can always dream. <laughs> Oh, wow. 
um, I shocked myself at what I could do and how good they made me look doing it. I give them all the credit.
and she just had collected all this stuff from us, and it just meant so much to her that she got to meet us. And um, yeah, it was very touching, very touching. It makes it, that's what it's about, you know? Uh, were you, any of you guys at the first Mormon one? Yeah, that was, that was for Make-A-Wish Boy, and he actually wanted to be SPD. Yeah. And that was definitely the coolest thing. Um, it was just awesome hanging out with his family. Like, his two little sisters were awesome, and we were just staying in their hotel room, like, playing games with them. And it was just really special. And it was cool that it was the first Morpher Con, and, you know, it was soon after our season ended. So it was, I don't know, it just really felt special. It was beautiful. Mine was um, our first Make Wish visit. visit. Um, his name was Joseph, and he came from New York. He had leukemia. And I remember them telling me earlier that day, sort of to prep me because they knew that I was a very emotional person. And I was filming um, on the sound stage, and I saw the door open, and here he comes in his uh, little blue Power Ranger costume, and I lost it. I, I had to go to my dressing room. I, and then he came in later and played, and I told his mom, when we wrap up the season, if he's doing okay, I'm going to fly to New York and, and see you guys. So I flew to New York, and now they're really good friends of mine. Um, he survived, and he was at the last one.
you know, it's, uh, you know, I know you guys look at this like it's a glamorous situation to be on a show and everything, but it is just a job, and we put on our pants the same way as you, and everything, so just, you know, appreciating where you are in your life, and don't take anything for granted. Um, I'm just trying to think of something. What I'm feeling here is something that is personal to me. There isn't anything I've done in acting that I wasn't scared to do. I was frightened every audition, <laughs> everything I did, I always was terrified. But I knew that it was what I wanted. And you must go for what you want because the courage will, may not come before, but it, it may be given to you afterwards, and it may not. But the thing is, you can't, it, that can't stop you. You've got to go for it. You will be scared doing what you don't want one day, perhaps you're doing a job you don't want, and you'll be scared doing the job you do want. There'll always be fear, but it doesn't have to rule you. So you can move forward. Don't wait for the courage, do the thing, and the courage will come. Or not that it doesn't matter, do the thing. Right. So just do it. <laughs> Facebook, so 
We love, we love all your kids. We really do. Well, this particular gentleman, he um, he goes online and he takes toys and videotapes himself with, with toys and he says what the toys are and what their character is and what episode they were in. And he does these toy reviews online and he's, he's quite, for an autistic guy, he's quite amazing for what he can do. So. I looked up to Carol Burnett. I looked up 
pretend to be her. Oh my goodness, I love comedy. And I would watch her show and I would pretend to be different things and different people and I still do it today. Success. I had no support. I come from a difficult background. I come from a poor background, a suffering background. Now, despite all those things, I still got to do what I wanted to do. And um, I did it because of my self belief and that thing of that, having a fear and doing it anyway. And also a sister who went through the same sort of suffering. I did, you know, a dysfunctional family. It's not boo hoo, it's bad facts. And then we move on from that. So you can make it out of the quagmire. You can be just as big and just as successful. Every dream you have, just want it and go for it and forget the rest. That's right. Do you miss it? You know, do you feel like it was just yesterday? It's like a blur. Like we always say, you know, you guys remember so much about it that we don't remember. But we were filming so much and we were in this bubble with each other. And so there's like, it's really hard sometimes to remember days or a time for us, you know. Um, so, and that's why we love you guys, because you remind us, it's like stepping back into our, our college years or whatever. Not that I went to college, but I should have, I should have Zachary. I should have gone to You know, for me, I honestly feel like people always ask me, would you go back? Would you do the show again? If they ask you back, would you, you know? And I, I really think about it. My answer is always the same, but I would do it if they were there. I miss them. You know, I miss the times we had on set. I miss the goofiness. I miss the tiredness. I miss the traveling. I miss, but we did it all together. Like, we were always kind of, you know, the team. And then we did the movie. We were really all we had. We had no friends in Australia. So it was like, I think about it and I go, I would do it again if they did it with me. Because I wanted to be that. I would want to spend time and have my girly time and have my boy time. Just, you know, just be what that was. So, you know, I, I, I like she said, sometimes it's hard to remember, you know, the show. You remember your friends and you remember the moments. And, and when I see them and they, you know, people have children now, it's like, wow. You know, so yeah, it's been a blur. Time has gone by. I look at them and go, wow. You know, I remember being that young. <laughs> you know, but it's amazing. So I miss them. I, I don't know that I miss the show. I miss my friends. No, well, you guys all look amazing, and you know, just I think for me, I liked it better when the Power Rangers were older than I was. And, and so <laughs> <laughs> So I was just another actor employed to fulfill a role on a feature film. 
So I was there by myself. They were beautiful to me. They didn't have to be, but they were gorgeous to me. But um, I must say the thing that was the most exciting was walking on the set. It was a nice, it was a nice film. It was about sixty to seventy million dollars. So there was some money to float around there, and I had never seen a set like this before. And they built the Ninjetti set, which was the set I was on, and it was. And they came, they brought me in, and I was just like, oh, wow, like that's for me. I'm going to do a scene in that. Oh wow, it was so gorgeous. I loved it. I wanted to live there. I would have moved in. <laughs>
Want to do some travel with me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> well, I like this little um, online radio show called Unscripted Radio. <laughs> Locked up abroad. I love that show, actually. <laughs> 